go to nasty world. I'm not going to do the whole of Nasty's world today. I'm just going to show off Nasty's world because you can 100% Nasty's world pretty easily. Oh, no, you can't. You could if it didn't require you to unlock a certain amount of gems. We'll see. It may have changed it. It probably am. It may have. Look at all the dragon heads. We're going to ignore them and I'm just going to collect gold. Trying to get this. <laughs> I'm sorry. So first we have Nort Cove. So let's get free Delwyn. Wrong your bad spelling. So yeah, they decide to bring back the whole linear thing after not doing it at all except for the final boss on the first world. <laughs> yeah, work that out. No, now, we let you choose whatever the fuck you wanted before, now, go linear again. Shut up. <laughs> And the only reason that you can't 100% Nasty's world is because they pipe gems in each dragon's mouth. Just makes it really difficult to do the final bits of this world and this game unless you 100%ed everything coming up to this. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Never gonna get over the world clip again. Hey! Are you getting the vibes of, like, toxic waste again? should have known that from Crash Bandicoot, but, you know, different games. Oh, Tuffy. I'm a real Tuffy. may have noticed. Anyway, what was I chatting about? So yeah, I've been getting a lot of like unwanted attention at work, which is just frustrating for me because it's like one moment they're telling me I'm not attracted, the next moment they're flirting with me and I'm just like, make up your mind and leave me alone. Hey, I rescued you already. Like Delbin. These dragons not only are not helping, but they're actively sucking. 
<laughs> you know? Like, they're getting caught again. Yeah, that kind of sucks at work lately. Because it, you know, it's just a lot of like. I know it's not real. But yeah, uh, I don't even want to talk about it. It's just so boring. Uh, oh, yeah, I haven't even talked about that really. Not in a while. I've been playing a lot of uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. That's been pretty good fun. I'm really enjoying that actually. I tried to get into Guilty Gear years ago. Actually, it has been years ago since, holy shit. I have Guilty Gear... Esh... X... Double X... Hash Reload... On my... Steam account, and then one of my friends got Revelator. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll try this, and like... I really wanted to get into it and I just never really had the time to, so I just, you know, I don't know that one. Uh, yeah, which is a shame because it looked really fun and I was always like, oh, if I just give it some time and do the tutorial and then I just never got the chance because like, it was my friend's copy and I was just hanging around his house at the time and now... I don't live with him, so... Yeah, and I don't have a gaming PC that's gonna be capable of, well, I got a MacBook, and that's it, so uh, very clearly not... not the specs needed to play Guilty Gear Double X. Um, which is a shame. I need to get a gaming PC sometime, but I'm not buying one in China because half of them have a fake version of Windows and half of them are just blocked to shit and <laughs> don't run anything. Because, yeah, not worth it. Because um, I actually want to be able to, like, use it for gaming if I'm going to get one. So I'm waiting until I leave, go somewhere like Japan or somewhere where, you know, it's kind of known for its range of gaming equipment, which is pretty much most of Asia, so just not China. China is known for censorship um, and oppressive authoritarian regimes. Thomas is him again. It's a bard again. Yeah, so Dragon Ball Fighter Z is absolutely like I'm really loving it, and I'm just like, oh yeah, this is awesome. Um, and I've always wanted to uh, get into Arxis games, and it just happens to be the one that clicked with me, and I've actually had a chance to play. So I've been having a pretty good laugh with it. Uh, Maybe I'll do a few videos on it later, but like I doubt I'm really doing anything other than casually playing it and uh, pretty badly. Um, I'm not exactly reinventing the wheel here. You don't really expect leak combo hacks. How to dominate using only Krillin <laughs> and only Senzu Bean.
how to make not fighting go tanks annoying, not annoying, whatever. How to deal with go tanks being a dick the whole time and filling the world with shit whilst blankering around. God damn go tanks. The AI loves going ham with. Whoa! We all saw that, right? Tell me I was recording. Oh shit, I nearly had a heart attack. We all saw those clip in where they're like, oh shit, he hasn't killed him yet. <laughs> Friend. A key. I've already spaced on where I saw the lockbox earlier. Oh, I didn't need to murder those rats, now I feel bad. Friend. Friend. Seriously, fuck you. I'm never buying a chest like that. <laughs> room way at all. I like hitting the barrels. Yeah, the AI is pretty good, which is great for offline players like myself right now. So, uh, playing DB Fighter Z offline, the AI is actually pretty good at, like, trying to compete with me at my level right now, which I normally find is either way too easy, or it's like reading your inputs, and you feel like, this is bullshit, it's just not letting me do anything, and every button I press is putting a better button out there, which is very, like, Capcom fighters. Like every time you play Street Fighter, you're like, the AI is just reading my inputs and then putting something out that's got a better frame advantage than me in every situation. Like, I light punch, it will find something that's lighter. You know what I mean? Oh, these, oh, I forgot about you. They used to just not have nerf guns. These used to be fucking guns that literally made a gun sound and you got shot. <laughs> like... Way to pussy out, splatooning it up there. Oh no, I just need to die 40 times. Definitely it feels like they made it easier, but I don't know how I come to that conclusion. Just normally I would game over around this area of the game in the classic. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe I would be aiming more for 100% and dying a lot, trying to find the edges of the level for treasure I'm just too dumb to find. This used to be a gun that shot bullets. They fear the 90s.
and it used to go. Don't believe me? Go watch someone else's play for the classic one. They're still working like shit. Calls mouth. Rescuing me. Go back, read that subtitle. Further we get into this game, the more spelling errors I'm noticing. Jesus, hire a proofreader, it's not that fucking hard. Or have someone on the member of your staff that can actually, like, take five seconds to read shit. Oh yeah, that's why I used to, like, hop on those, I think. Or well, maybe you can't, I can't remember. Whoa! Whoa! Eh! Bombed. Wasn't ready for his over the shoulder trick there. He's doing this shit where he's rolling it down his arm. Oh, they changed on me. Cheeky bastard. There's a lot of hidden areas in this. A lot. A lot. Cletus is back. Oh, that'll teach him. Uh, why did Cletus leave the swamp? Last time we talked to him, he was like, Man, I love the swamp. Like, uh, okay, so why are you out here? Oh. Um. Um, oh, you're kidding me, that's, that's a lot of work, It's a lot of work, just go for the hard progress right now, critical path, not hard progress, you can always return, nothing in it, ooh, I forgot about you, yeah, now, now we're cooking, that's the badger, I remember this. Shame I'm shit at this tech. Yeah, fuck you. Always cool guys kill stuff off screen by casually just going here. So now you saw all of this neat content. Which I legit had forgotten about. Ow! Oh, you Splatoon kid now, squid now. No, you're a kid now. You're a squid now. Ow! Oh, please. No! Slaughtered. Stop, he's already dead. Fuck you. Oh, you little shit. See why I had trouble with this level when I was younger, or when I was dumber, if that was possible. Oh, I, every time he gets me that shit. Yeah, they're not fucking around on this level. All these gems are not a single butterfly. 
Oh, okay. Fuck me, I guess. Oh! Snitty sniped! Yeah, they don't give a solitary shit, do they? If there were any fucks given, it wasn't by these guys. The red berets. Oh! The game wasn't ready for me to die onto water. The game was not ready. Nah. 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 Nah, man. Yimin. Yimin. Oh. Eat a dick. No. No. Now, if you stayed behind and killed them all individually, you'd be harvesting these little orbies. At least. Oh! You did it again. I fell for the same frame trap. Frame trap? Environment trap. Doesn't matter. I use everything wrong. I'm wrong. Oh! That's what I get for this. Fuck you. At least I'm near another life again. Because you know I might run out. No! Oh, if I shout no loud enough at him, he'll stop. And they were guarding the end. And not the Metal Gear Solid 3 boss. Speaking of Metal Gear Solid, would anyone actually watch? I say as if anyone's watching this. Um, I met a full Metal Gear Solid 5 playthrough, because I'm considering it. I'm putting my finger on that trigger. Nork Nexus. They really went for the GNs for this, didn't they? Crash is all about everyone having the abbreviation N something palm. This is just gonna, gonna, gonna. Gave me one rat, two rats, three rats. Okay. See? Here's two levels and a boss. I wonder what's in here. Bullshit progress shit. Sea of a dragon, you might say. Let's just go kill Nasty Nork. Are you ready? We got five minutes to finish this whole game. Seven minutes if we're being charitable. Then it's a round half hour thing. Cannon endings. We got most of the treasure. We're missing about two grand. It's fine. I mean, they're literally like a whole group of dragons, and none of them seem to be lifting a fucking finger finding their treasure. <laughs> you know, I have gone and killed the big bad. You think they could at least pick a few coins up on the way out? These assholes. Oh, I forgot you could do that. I forgot a lot about this boss, to be honest. Uh, like how to fight him is one of the things I've forgotten. Uh, things that have killed me have mostly been the camera. <laughs> oh yeah, you can't fight him, you have to chase these little stinkers. got magic thieves that are green and even more annoying as you can see. Oh, I thought he was turning here. Ah uh Oh that was the trick all along.
Okay. I'm glad this is working. Aren't you glad this is working? I'm so glad this is working. Sorry, like, I have key, go to lock. You can see my, why I did that. That's not the answer, what the fuck is? <laughs> oh, you're, okay, <laughs> be a dick. I don't know how to deal with this asshole now, there's no gems in the way, gimme gem. Look at him. These identical locks, how, you know, for identical keys. How stupid of me. I'm only a little bit sorry. Oh, yay. area. It's not even that bad. It's just it makes you do the whole thing again each fucking time. And it's like, just keep... You thought you were fighting a boss? No, you're gonna chase thieves. That's all this level's for. Chase these irritating thieves that you've been trying to avoid most of the game and have really only had practice if you bothered getting the dragon eggs. Let's face it. And half the time I was hacking those, like, by, like, kind of just, like, doing cheeky shit. Oh. Sounds of frustration. If that counts as a good... If that counted as a hit in that... Did I get it? Yeah. Don't want to be chasing him on that, like, area over here. But we're going to go around it anyway, because there's gems. And, you know, kleptomania, so. I'm probably wrong. If I go up to him and we'll get slaughtered, so I have to check that I am in fact not wrong and check every part in case. Oh, he ran away, so I am right. The clue was he ran away because he psychically knew. Ah. Oh. You can chase him like a crazy person, but I'm going to go ahead and assume. You can't catch him. So I'm not even going to try. Oh, he runs so fast. Faster than the thieves and he's twice, ten times the size. Guy has got some serious cardio. Oh no, we do have to catch him. Okay. Jeez, he is booking it. Well, you know, I got the pesky shiny things out of the way. Ooh! Really don't want you to catch him. This whole area was always just very weird. It's like, this is the boss fight? Oh, do I have to hit his ass? <laughs> Sorry, I said that in a really weird way. Do I have to hit his ass? Yes. Tap that ass. And here, little Durgan. I 
I will catch him uh, when he's weakest in his reset position. <laughs> I'm not supposed to have caught up with him that quickly. Huh? Oh, I went the wrong way. Or did I? Am I stupid? I'm stupid, aren't I? I knew it all this time. So, we've only got 100 treasure left, and this area is just piled with treasure. So, Spyro tends to do this thing, I think, of just fucking up your, uh, oh yeah, expectations of what a boss is in a platformer, which is the free hit rule, the, uh, like, you know, the very Mario thing, and very other thing that a lot of properties copy now of just, oh, I've got to chase him on this shit, it's just, on, oh, no I don't, by just going, no you hit him twice, and that's the end of the game, look a sheep, We're going to frame this now. <laughs> We're going to frame this around an interview because he's cool and everyone knows he's cool, so he gets time on the TV because he's cool. Sorry, I may just be overdoing the whole yeah, it's so 90s, but it's like it does feel like they wouldn't. That wouldn't be how they frame the introduction of a character now with like boom mics and microphones and news people and shaky cam footage going, Yo, look, it's Spyro, gonna do some sick stuff tonight on Jackass. It just feels a bit like that. I know they don't do that, but it feels like that was like not even seen as cool, that was seen as normal that at that point, you know, like that's how they frame ad campaigns, that's how they frame things. And you got to remember, the 90s was also this time where everything had to have a cuddly mascot with some attitude. So, um, the 90s was a strange place where they just went, we need, every console needs a mascot. Why? Because Nintendo and Sega have one. And that was literally the reason. And there was no other reason. You know, it's just, fuck you. They have one, so we need one. Okay, do you want to make one that's yours? No, I'm going to hire out, like, three different people, say Sony, to make them for us. Then we won't own the rights to any of them, and then all of them will get sick to the back teeth of making them for us because we keep throwing money at them to make a new one every year to two years. And they're, like, burnt out to shit on this, like, you know, Insomniac quit Spyro, Naughty Dog quit Crash, because it's like, every year you just want another fucking game. <laughs> it doesn't even matter if the last one was shit. So, yeah, you know, you're just like, and they were running on such low budgets back then, and you're just like, what even was the point? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what did you, like, but it's like, you know, I'm sure people will be looking back at the warts. I mean, people already do in the 2010s and the soon 2020s and go, what the fuck? Why did we all just go, that's what has to happen? Because, you know, that's how, you know, certain things are just like, 
we have to have this thing in media. Why? Because we've always had this thing in media. And you're just like, but it's not even that good. And, you know, hey, people like it. It's been focus tested. People will look back on the aughts and 2010s looking at all of the edgy, adult-oriented animation that's in the West where there's the main characters a fucking cunt to everybody else in the thing and go, why did everything have to be this for like a good 10 years at least? And that will be, that will be the aughts thing. Cause yeah, there's Rick and Morty, but way before that there was Archer and Archer's like a cunt to everybody. <laughs> That's like his whole thing. Family Guy, Peter Griffin's a cunt to everybody. That's his thing. South Park, the main characters of South Park are cunts to everybody, and that's their thing. And it's just like, can everyone look back at that and go, oh, yeah, the fake edgy cartoon that's just the main character's an asshole. Like, that wasn't just straight up cribbing from Blackadder because the main character and that's an asshole, but this one's animated and way more about their, like, philosophy of each thing, you know, like, the ridiculous, edgy nihilism of, like, Rick and Morty to, like, the uh, ridiculous narcissism pushed forwards as a, a character for Archer, you know what I mean? It's just like, yes, we get it, so clever, <laughs> you know what I mean? And once you've seen like a like couple of those and you've really dissected them or you've just watched them back to back, you are a bit like, that's what the aughts will be known for. Quote unquote edgy cartoons that are just kind of offensive and in the case of Family Guy, just incredibly phobic towards everybody. And, you know, the joke gets old really quickly and when you're young and you're in college or uni, you watch Family Guy and go, yeah, okay, it's funny sometimes, but a lot of these cutaways don't fucking make sense if you're not an American with a very specific, like, frame of reference of TV and culture. So you're just like, I don't... And then some of it, you're like, ha-ha, yeah, Chris Martin does fucking suck. And that's literally, like, all there is to it. And then you're just like, yeah, when one of the side characters is an old man that lives nearby and is clearly a pedophile and that's their idea of funny or creepy pervert neighbor and he's one of the most popular characters of the entire franchise of quagmire and he's essentially a pervert and rapist <laughs> like, and they don't really dance around that and that's considered <laughs> it's funny because it's like yeah no it's, it's it's not really is it it's just weird but, you know, um, I mean, what else will it be known for? I mean, the 90s was known for a lot of things. Uh, ports. Halfway decent Pokemon games. The early orts on the DS. Uh, Pokemon Go. <laughs> like, I don't know. load of other bullshit. I mean, the big thing for the 2010 video game thing would be like, the 2010s was that period where we decided to remake everything, as I'm literally paying a remake right now, and they HD re-released everything. Why? Because someone said fuck backwards compatibility purely for this reason. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> And that's what we'll be known for. What were the big game releases of the 2010s? Well, you know, the Resident Evil remakes, the sequels to video games that only people from the 90s actually played, and the remakes of other 90s classics, like Spyro, Crash, Final Fantasy. <laughs> the list goes on. And it would just be like, oh yeah. And then there was those HD collections of all the Metal Gear games that came out in the 90s. Or the orts, really. Jeez. It's kind of depressing. But at the same time, 
they're doing amazing jobs. Like, basically, I have played, what, RE2 Remake, RE3 Remake, the Crash Remakes, the Spyro Remake. Um, I've heard stories that, um, the, uh, I've heard stories that, um, oh, all of the theme music was done by Stuart Copeland. Um, I've heard stories that the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1, 2 remake's pretty good. Uh, I've heard the Final Fantasy remake is pretty good, that they've chucked out, recently they chucked out, worked meticulously over. I've just never been a huge JRPG fan outside of Pokemon and Monster Hunter, which is a bit of a weird thing to say. Um, yeah, like... I haven't played a re-release, or well, actually HD remake, entire remake from the ground up, that has been done poorly yet. Mostly because I I kind of check reviews before I buy things, and I buy very few games, and then I play the shit out of them until I complete them to a degree that I'm happy with. But um, yeah, I'm trying to think right now. The only thing I played that was technically a re-release that I didn't like was Metro Last Light, and that's because I didn't play any of a Metro game, didn't understand what it wanted from me, and it was not a particularly good, it wasn't a remake or a HD upgrade or a HD collection, it's just the exact same game chucked back onto the PS4. And it has a lot of issues that obviously is just didn't have checked out before, where certain cutscenes just don't run as like models clip in and textures fail to load in entirely. And you're sat there like, I don't need to know much about the game to know that this is really shit. And also, I don't need to know much about the game to know that you're literally taking me through a whirlwind magical mystery tour of the first game where like here's the bug cavern and here's the communists and here are the nazis and here are this and it's like every level is just like different things to shoot at and you're being introduced to everything really quickly really like rapidly one after the other in your life either this is a long game that's like okay here are the footnotes from the first game Spiders, this, that, this, that. This is how you deal with these things. Okay, got that? Okay, here's a big betrayal of this this story mode. Now play for another 20 hours. Or it's like... There was like five more hours after I finished... I, after I put down the game and went, Nah, I don't really like it. Uh, it's the only game I got on my PS4 aside from Wolfenstein... The class final colossus the colossus of something that i stopped and i haven't come back to oh that's a lie that's a huge lie i've also got sekiro and bloodborne which of course i've put down and i'll come back to in a long time because i sit there and i go what the fuck and the longer i leave it the more out of like practice i am and the worse it gets and I'm bad. I'm really fucking bad. I'm always like, no, 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 I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. And I can do Bloodborne a little bit, and I can do Sekiro a little bit. And then I get stuck on the same bits I've been stuck on for months, because I haven't come back to it. And I'm like, I'm just shit at this game, that's the problem. I'm just shit at games like this. And I can accept that without getting salty, like some people I know, who literally can't deal with losing at anything. Because I understand it's supposed to be hard, so I'm just like, okay, but it's so hard I can't get past a certain thing, and I'm pretty early in both games. And I'm just out there like, I could do this if I, like, labbed it for a long time, but I'm lazy, so I'm not going to do that. And I know I'm not going to do that. It's the same with fighting games. It's like, I could get good at this game, but it's probably going to take me, like days of labbing total and I don't have the time or interest to hold my attention that length of time to get good at the game which is a shame because both games lore interest me 
and I love fighting games, and I have the attention span of a fucking donut, <laughs> like nowadays. Um, that's that's on me, and I've relegated myself to being stuck playing like colorful two D platformers as I gradually turn into a vegetable. Um, that's that's me because. I'm lazy and don't want to get better at things, but at least I'm aware of it, I guess, rather than just living in a cloud of my own self-righteousness going, no, it's the world's fault for being slightly too hard for me and I don't want to try. <laughs> it's like, I know I want to, don't want to try. And I can personally sit there and go, okay, that's my fault, you know. I could try, I choose not to. But, you know, oh. oh, and I played Let It Die for a bit. Let It Die is really good. I keep coming back to Let It Die, actually, but I got to the first boss, the first boss I encountered anyway, that big boss, not just, you know. I played a few guys that were sort of bosses, but this guy had a big... What are you doing, trying to eat my feet? Uh, this guy had a big opening like thing and had a voice that he was voice acted and everything and that was the first boss I came across and I just got absolutely slaughtered by him and the ads he had and I was just like oh that's where the the difficulty curve was because it's like I was doing fine up until I hit that boss and then I was like oh I'm getting murdered, like, everything's one-hitting me, and I had some good armor and shit. I'm like, ah, I see now why this game has a pay-to-resurrect-your-old guy thing. And I was like, oh, that's, that's the game. <laughs> I was like, okay. You know, like the concept, think it's a real neat concept, realize that I'm never going to reach the top of that tower on Let It Die, even though I love everything about that game, because it's just, it feels like Top of That Tower is a long way away from where I am. <laughs> yeah, you know. Maybe one day. I don't feel like doing an LP of that. I don't think that would be fun to watch. But maybe I will someday. <clears throat> if I get back into it ever again. Oh. Oh, mad. Oh, man. I want to play Killer 7, Killer is Dead at some point. But that requires me to, I don't know, like, find a platform that's actually still got them on here. Um... River City Girls look pretty good. I mentioned in a previous video that I was really interested in getting back into uh, Skull Girls after buying it several times and then just putting it down and then never playing it ever again. And that was the case until I heard the news with Lab Zero of them breaking up and that the guy that was running Lab Zero is basically an irretrievable asshole. And I was like, oh, well now I feel justified in not picking up this video game for so long, even though I bought it two or three times. Um, and I'm sort of like, well, I'm definitely not buying it now if the money goes directly to him. And then the company collapsed, and I was like, well, I'm definitely not buying it now because I doubt it's on the websites anymore. Oh, uh, well, shame it's a good game. I liked it. I've always liked it, but I've sat there and I've always sat there and thought, this game, it's just not clicking with me. The art style's great, the characters are great, everything about it is great. It's just something to do with the inputting and like the way the game plays. I'm just like, eh. Oh, like they said the thing. There's a, 
recipe differ a lot. Oh, end of game. And I haven't uploaded a single part. And that was like, fucking hell, that was like 10, 15 minutes of credits. Oh. So now, tomorrow, I'm going to be editing and uploading the entire part of this. Oh. Stinger Dragon. Towards the Stinger Dragon. Magnus the Stinger Dragon. Yeah, there's your answer. You want to see the whole game? Pick up every single thing. You remember in the 90s games, or a lot of the platformers even to this day, where they're like, no, pick up every single thing. And then you can have the final level. And then how Assassin's Creed took that to the absolute ultimate of fuck you know and it's like collect every feather every banner everything that we've put in this massive map it will take you hundreds if not thousands of hours and it will mean that your mum will speak to you one more time because she can't speak unless you collect feathers because Etsy's mum loves feathers or something and that was when that was the burnout point for me and a lot of other people where it was just like we were raised on this shit and we were like okay we're used to this uh, it'll, it'll be something good it'll be something good and it was literally like not even worth and you're like okay I'm never doing this again and it it now ironically eats itself because I'm now looking at this thinking eh, yeah it's not worth I'm not doing all those flight levels and 100%ing all in wanting them and like finding missing gems in areas I've forgotten about for that no fuck you I ain't doing that and uh, <laughs> like same with Crash I could get every gem but I know it's hell so I'm not going to because I've done it before so no anyway you know what I will do though yeah take that motion sickness people I, you know what oh he sneezed you know what we will do though see you in Spyro 2 the, the UK subtitle was Gateway to Glimmer and this one's called Ripto's Rampage or Ripto's Revenge, which is the official title. And I was like, oh yeah. So we'll see you in Spyro 2. It doesn't, doesn't matter. That rat clip out of existence. It doesn't matter. Yeah, bye. <laughs>